So we just completed a small research study here at KP and we looked at spin rate. After reviewing all of the relevant information, we wanted to know as a staff, what causes lower versus higher spin rates in pitchers? In this episode, we're gonna show you exactly what we found. And what we found might actually change the way that you see fastball spin rate. Up. Mr. Phelps. Yeah, what do you need? <laughs> um, I have an idea today. So we have the A3 guys coming in. Um, I want to run a research study. How do you feel about that? Okay, on what? So we've been looking at spin rates. You and I did that study with Enos Aris a long time back, uh, looking at like sticky stuff. But I yeah. want to know what like naturally enhances spin rate or if anything does, I guess. With Goni Armor, we can get flexibility of either like the hand uh, or the fingers. And then with the measuring tape, we can get like their wingspan. I like that. The flexibility is a good one. I like that a lot. All right, cool. Well, let's do this for me. Set up the spreadsheet, get Tip and Danny ready to go. Let them know that when we get in today, I'm going to get those guys basically corralled. We're going to push through this thing and we're going to hopefully in like six hours, uh, try to capture everything from finger flexibility, hand size, limb length. I wanna get as much as I can. And then when we throw our bullpens today, I'll tag all the guys, I'll get all the spin data and uh, see if we can figure out if anything correlates to, to higher spin rate. Sweet, sounds good. All right, man, I'll see you in just a few minutes. I'm headed to the facility now. See ya. Later. So quite frankly, I'm not sure what to expect from all of this, but today we're gonna collect some data and we're gonna take our first steps at better understanding what impacts spin rate. Let's roll the clip. Our first step in trying to figure out what causes higher spin was to determine if a pitcher's body could play factor into their spin. Research has looked at everything from body types to the amount of sweat a pitcher would accumulate in their hands, but it's all been inconclusive to date. So MLB.com defines spin rate like this. A pitcher's spin rate represents the rate of spin on a baseball after it's released. It is measured in revolutions per minute. Revolutions per minute are how many times a baseball spins in one minute. All right, so part one is complete. We are now gonna be jumping into our second part, which is our bullpens. We're gonna use TrackMan here, start to collect some spin data and see how well these guys throw it. We're gonna connect what we took in part one with all the body measurements and see if any of that aligns with our spin rate. Let's try it out. Simply stated, the amount of spin on a pitch changes its trajectory. This is due to something that we see in science called the Magnus effect. So when we throw a fastball, it travels through the air and friction is created between the air and the ball. The ball spins backward and it drives the air behind the back of the ball and it imparts an equal and opposite force upward. The more spin, the greater the force. In this case, our ball spinning backwards means that the ball will maintain its flight for a longer duration while in flight. Let's look at an example of this. When we talk about two of the same pitches thrown at the same velocity, we could say that they would end up in different places depending on how much different their spins are. So we just finished up five hours of bullpens with 20 different guys. We looked at everything from fastball spin rate to fastball velocity, fastball spin efficiency. We looked at finger dexterity, finger length, limb length, wing span. The real question still stands though, does any of this actually correlate to spin rate or not? Let's find out. So over the last couple days, our team has been compiling all of this data that we took on hand length, finger length, finger flexibility, wingspan, arm length. We took spin rate data, ball velocity data, all from TrackMan. We've dubbed this project the spin rate project. With that being said, let's dive in and show you what we're gonna call part one of our spin rate project to try to understand what it is, number one, that we collected, and number two, where is this gonna go in the future for us? So let's check it out. When we look at our actual data here, so let's go to arm length first, and let's look at what we saw. We really see no correlation here. So there's, there's just no correlation to higher spin rate. Now, mind you, we have 20 athletes, so keep that in mind as we go through the results here, that we're only looking at a series of 20 athletes. We wanna be really clear about that. Let's go back to 
finger length here, and let's look at finger length. So same thing, you would think that somebody who has a longer finger length, we measure this by tip of the finger down to the first crease where the palm is at. And so we wanted to say, did finger length possibly correlate to spin, a higher spin rate? In this case, we see that there's a little bit higher correlation, but really in the grand scheme of things, when we talk about correlations, there's almost no correlation here. So this is interesting. We looked at wingspan, told the same story as arm length. When we looked at hand size, we measured it from the tip of the finger all the way down to the crease at the bottom of the hand. And what we saw is kind of the same thing. We also saw that a lot of our athletes fell into kind of the same area on the graph. The last piece I wanna bring up here is finger flexibility. So finger flexibility is one of those things that you know we also thought was going to be a potential indicator of higher spin. When we measured finger flexibility, we laid our athlete's hand down on the table and we had them pull their finger up. We used a goniometer to actually measure the angle. What we found is that our athletes varied greatly in terms of their finger flexibility. However, the impact on the pitch itself uh, was not really correlated to higher spin. So part one and all of the information that we've collected, we're gonna say we have no correlation so far. Why would it be in our conclusion and our results that number one, there was really no correlation? Number two, what are some trends that we saw in our population that maybe led us to no correlation? And could we redo this again? Or if we had you know, a thousand athletes, would this change in terms of what we saw in terms of results? If you look at research that exists today, in baseball specifically, you'll see the same results time and time and time again. Hand size, limb length, these things don't correlate to spin rate. Why is that? When we compare direct hand size or limb length direct to spin rate, we're taking out one key component. The key component that we're missing is how the athlete spins the pitch specifically. We need to normalize spin rate and velocity we need to normalize spin rate to the type of pitch specifically that we're throwing. We're gonna label this, like I said, as a part one. We're gonna to try to figure out what this information means to us, and then we're gonna to go to a part two down the road, and the part two for us is gonna be looking at how do we normalize the spin. It's gonna be ongoing until we find an answer. But here at KP, that's what we're about. That's, that's our mission, that's our goal. We don't look at this thing as a, a one and done. We're gonna look at the data necessary. We're gonna keep collecting and keep trying to find answers to the big picture. So we appreciate you guys checking out our YouTube video, our YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe below for more videos like this. If you guys have any questions about training, about philosophy of training, about product, technology, and baseball, this channel's here for you. You can also reach out to us, support at kineticprobaseball.com. You're gonna get myself or our team. We're gonna to respond to you guys and help you with your pitching journey. Maybe you're just a fan out there and you love baseball and you wanna see more of these videos, hit the like button, make sure you support us. We're gonna keep going in deep. We have so many cool research projects coming down the line. We hope that you guys enjoy this and you guys follow along. Appreciate you guys as always. Keep climbing.